All right, guys. So 2024 Unleashed, um, I have put into the chat box, everybody should have it now, um, your guide. So it's a PDF guide. I am going to share my screen so that I can walk you guys through it. So um, Productive Flow, just so you know, it's the name of my coaching company. So I just reused an old template <laughs> to make it easy to make. So we are going to be talking today about crafting a year of breakthrough success. So I actually did this myself in this, um, hang on, uh, Jay, you've got that, right? Um, this is an Evo planner, okay? I love the Evo planner. This is my favorite planner that I use. Everybody has one that they love. This is mine because you actually have to go to the website and take a quiz before they tell you which Evo planner you can get because it's based on brain type. So if you're familiar with the disc, it's similar to that. Um, but I'm an explorer in here. So mine says explorer right here. And it's a very nice planner. I love this one. It's my favorite. And um, one of the things that I did the other day was I was thinking about my 2024 annual outlook. And so basically what I did was I went through how I created my outlook at, for the entire year, what I was reflecting on for 2023. And then I built that into this guide so that we could go through it together. And for those of you who don't know me or aren't familiar with me, I, I've been in real estate for 30 years. I've been a coach and consultant for 21 years, and my main career focus has been on psychology of real estate agents, understanding the emotions and the energy behind what drives us forward and what holds us back. And so as we're going through this, it may look a little different from some of the things that you've seen before around planning. Some of it may seem similar. Some of it may seem different. Because I take that approach of understanding what drives us and what is going to help us move forward, okay? And if any of you did my local agent legend thing that we did a few weeks back, um, you know I really like to focus in on you as an individual and what your passion is, who you're passionate about serving and why you're passionate about serving those people. So what we're going to be doing is going through um, this booklet and, and I want you to do this as we go. Okay. So consider this more of like a workshop than like me just teaching you or telling you what to do. Okay. So key growth points is the first thing that we're going to start with. Does anybody, um, let me pull up the chat here. Does anybody have any questions? Does any, is anybody not have the, um, the booklet, the guide? Are we all good? We're all on the same page here? Yeah. If you, All you need to do is just scroll into, open up the chat box and go to where the PDF looking icon is and just click on the little yes. down arrow. It'll download to your computer. Exactly. Yeah. But if anybody jumped on later, if you need it again, I can always add it again, but just let me know if you need it. Um, so we're going to start with key, key growth points, okay, which is right here on the second page. So for me, and I'm going to go through and tell you what I've done, what I'm focused on so that it can help you understand what it is that you want to do. So you see like what I did and then take in you and your personality, your thoughts, your feelings, and, and then make this yours, right? So for me, my key growth points from a career perspective are focused on, I'm, I'm building a state right now, right? So for Epic, so a recruitment agent attraction is a big part of my growth point for this next year. Uh, structure and organization, again, because I'm growing a state here, that structure and organization, putting that together, and also not just from that perspective, but the organization and structure of what my life looks like now, because there's a big shift since I came on board with Epic and another big shift now being the state broker that there are going to be things that I need to restructure in my life as well as in my business to make room for all of this. And so I think it's really important that we understand what we do need to make room for in our lives so that we're not just creating a goal list, but we're creating something that is sustainable for us to implement in our calendar, in our actions every single day. Uh, agent development. So this is always a part of my uh, growth points for the year 
because I am focused on agents and agents, agents, individual growth, that agent development is important to me. Um, Don and I are members of the marketing training committee here at Epic. And so that's one of the things that we're working on together too, is building out marketing training for agents for, for here. So, um, making sure that we're we're developing agents and we're creating the content and the programs and things that are going to help agents develop and grow as well. And then uh, social media expansion was one of them. Um, I really focused, I was telling Jay this yesterday, on my short form video content. So that's something I'm adding in there as a key growth point, uh, as well as um, agent community culture. I put that in there because, again, part of growing a state is, um, you know, you're growing a community of agents, you're growing the culture that you're creating. And this is something, even though, you know, you may not be a broker growing a state, but you're still an agent. And if you are interested in growing your downline, that there is a community and a culture that goes along with that as well. So that's something that I put into my plan for this year. And then speaking, sharing my messaging. So that can feed into some of the other areas, but like those are my main key growth points. So what I want you to look at for yours is I want you to look at what is important to you for this upcoming year. What are the things that you feel like this is what I really want to make my year about? And if you don't know what all those things are yet, that's okay, because we're going to go through some other exercises on this, this guide, within this guide, that may help you identify what those key growth points are. So it's really important, though, that you have a key focus on the things that are most important for your year, because when you have the key focus, then you can break it down into your daily, weekly, monthly actions. And so we're gonna we're gonna work on that here as well. So um, key growth points. Does anybody have any questions on that section? Does anybody have any thoughts on what some of their key growth points might be? Is this uh, both work-related or, or maybe even more mental? Up to you, up to you. It can be either one. It's taking, what are my main goals? And how do I break those down into how I'm going to turn those into tasks? Because when we set a goal, it, it's not going to happen if we don't take action on a consistent, regular basis on the things that are going to lead to those goals. So we have to set what are a lot of times when people think goals are like, oh, I want to be this or I want to be that, you know, but they don't necessarily break that down into the actions that take them to that that goal. And so it's it's sometimes we don't need to even know what the actual goal is right this second. We need to know what it is that we want to experience, what it is that we want to live, what it is that we want to be. And when we do that, it helps us break down into a, a, a broader focus of an overview. What do you want 2024 to look like? What do you want to become different in this year? I would like to get more comfortable with posting videos. It's a fear of mine that I need to overcome, but that okay. is one of my my um, growth or where I would like to grow going into 2024. Okay, I love that. It's a really good one. It's, um, can you tell me a little bit about what do you think that fear is that's holding you back from feeling more comfortable on video? What are you worried about when you when you think about, oh, I'm going to create a video? What's What are the thoughts that pop up in your head? Uh, fear of making a mistake, um, not maybe not sharing content that people are really interested in. And okay. I think the when the number one thing is something that I shouldn't care about, but I do is what other people are going to think. Okay. So a lot of those feed into some really common fears, like I'm I don't feel like I'm good enough, or I don't feel like people are going to pay attention, like other people are already saying this or doing this. So why would they be interested in how I do it or what I do or what I say? Um, and then there's there's also that fear of saying, well, what if I mess up and then I'm humiliating myself, right? So those are really, really, really common fears. And um, 
I'll, I'll say that usually they're stemming from some experience that we've had or we've seen other people have, because that can also create a fear, where they've done those things, right? Or something that somebody said to us at one point. So I'll give you an example. Um, I had a client uh, maybe about five years ago who really struggled with this exact same thing about being on video. And when we worked down to it, we found that when she was growing up, she had a, a little brother or an older brother. She had a brother. And uh, he told her that she was fat and ugly and nobody wanted to hear anything she had to say. <laughs> And it really stuck with her. And when we we realized that that was the thing that was holding her back was just that one statement that he had made when they were kids, then all of a sudden it was like, why would I be worried about that? You know, and I think, too, it's, you know, getting into a space of letting go of fear in general, right? So asking ourselves, my husband actually helped me out with this one because I've struggled with anxiety for a lot of my life. And when he saw me one time uh, early on in our relationship in the middle of a panic attack, he's like, okay, well, what are you worried about? And I said, well, this is what I'm worried about. He goes, okay, well, if that happens, what's the worst possible result? And then I say, well, this, and he goes, okay. And if that happens, then what do you do? I'm like, well, this, you know, okay, well, if that happens, then what do you do? Well, this, right? And so he just got me down to the point where I realized that it didn't matter what happened. I, I knew how to fix it. I knew how to handle it. And it released a lot of the fear I was feeling. And so it was after those experiences that I was able to get onto video and do things like, trip over my words or uh one time I tripped over my dog while I was recording a video teaching a class and literally almost toppled over and it was fine I didn't stop the camera I didn't get embarrassed I just started laughing it was like this is what happens when I try to record a, a video with my dog underneath me you know and I just started laughing and what was interesting was the feedback that I got from that because I never edited it out of the video. I left it in there. And the feedback that I got was that I was so much fun and that I was so relatable and that they felt like these were, were reasons that they couldn't record a video, but seeing me and how I handled that situation, that they felt more confident being able to record a video feeling like, well, if I mess up, it's no big deal. I can just laugh at myself and keep going on. So does that, does that help you? Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, you are very welcome. All right. So anybody else have a key growth point that they want to they want to discuss? Um, I do briefly. And the only reason I'm not on camera is because my hair is in rollers. <laughs> no worries, Pamelita. <laughs> thank you. So recruiting for me is a new thing or agent mm -hmm. attraction, whatever way sure. you want to call it. It's all the same thing. This is new for me, even though I've been in real estate for 26 years as a broker. I've never had to recruit. People have always come to me and wanted to work for me. I mm -hmm. stopped taking mm -hmm. on any agents a couple of years ago, partially because of a, a serious health issue, but also too, I didn't have anything to offer them. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything okay. to offer them other than me, just what I could teach them. So that's very draining mm -hmm. for me. So now I'm in a whole situation where I can actually give to my colleagues, but I'm not exactly sure I'm getting different things, email them, call them, text them. And, you know, I do a lot of social media as well. Very mm -hmm. comfortable with that. Very comfortable with picking up the phone for a FISBO or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm outside of my comfort zone is what I'm saying. And I'm not exactly sure uh, what type of organization and structure that I need to have moving forward because I do have a very specific plan of who I want to recruit for mm -hmm. agent attraction. I'm just not okay. sure of what to do with it after this. Okay. So a couple of things there. I want you to make sure that you put agent attraction on your key growth point for sure. Okay. But I'm going to challenge your statement around this is new to me because 
you you've had your own company as a broker and yes. you have brought on agents who just came to you right we're yeah. going to put that in air quotes that it just they just came to you but and and apparently the universe likes that because we just released balloons all over my zoom screen <laughs> <laughs> it happens randomly for me i don't know why but um yeah I mean, you've had agents that have been attracted to you and what you have had to offer and not only that, but you've built a real estate business for yourself through 26 years. So there has always been an amount of recruitment going on, whether that was you recruiting clients, you picking up the phone and calling for sale by owners and things like you mentioned, right? Those are all forms of recruitment. It's just when you look at it from the perspective of the person I'm attracting and the reason I'm attracting them are a little different. It That's really the only thing that's changed here. And it's not that much different, right? From a buyer or seller or an agent for your own company as it Agreed. is for now you being part of Epic. It's all the same thing. So I don't want you to say, I need to learn a whole bunch of new things to go out there and do what I've been doing already for 26 years. I want you to dip into your strengths that you already have clearly and say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to use. And, and I'm just going to go out there and be me and attract agents the way I have naturally attracted clients and agents all this time. I can do that. Well, there you go. That, that, is I, that I can do. Easy. And I have, <laughs> start, I have made appointments non-stop through the month of December because everybody's having their parties. They're having penthouse hard hat tours. You know, mm -hmm. different builders are doing different things. And my success has always been in person. In yes. person. I, I just, I like being around people. I have mm -hmm. a lot of excitement and passion. And I think that that's a better way for me to where I'm more comfortable with than I don't mind sending out emails. I don't mind sending out texts, but what I really hate is calling people, just cold calling them and saying, Hey, I've got something great. That's just, I've never been able. I don't know if I'm just too Southern or what, but I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just don't do that in the South. You know, you, you just don't pick up the phone and start, calling people out of the blue you, you don't even drop by you know you gotta okay so I'm, I'm gonna challenge that one a little bit too and, okay. and I'm saying this because it's uh it's I, I love what you've done and I love the in-person aspect and so I do want you to utilize that and this being your strength utilize that and make that be how you attract because it's okay. what you do naturally. So go after that. Don't try to do something for something that doesn't feel natural to you. Use your strengths and make that what you do. Okay. okay. So that being said, I want to challenge what you were talking about. Um, oh my gosh. Now I lost it. Where did it go? <laughs> I'm Southern. <laughs> Southern. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Yes. About the cold calling because, um, when I was first getting involved with, with Epic and Dawn first introduced me to Charles and I said, listen, I want to get involved. I want to get engaged. Like my state's not open yet. What can I do? And he said, well, listen, I've got a list of, of agents here in North Carolina. You want to help me call those people? You go after it. And I'm like, yes, let's do that. So he handed me a script. And I would call these people North Carolina. Now, I grew up in Florida, okay? I don't have a big Southern accent or anything, but all those people I was calling in North Carolina do. So I started calling using his script, using my best Southern Belle accent. And uh, it was you, awesome. Yeah, give me that script because I've got that Southern Belle accent. It just won't go away. Uh, let me it's tell you something. That just rolls right off the tongue. I love it. <laughs> and it was amazing. And here's the thing is that, you know, when I started out in real estate 30 years ago, I was a child. So, I, I mean, I was 19. I wasn't a child, but I was basically a child. And I had a hard time convincing people that I could, you know, be trusted with their biggest investment, right? Because right. I looked like a child. I was a child. And 
I relied on cold calls to build my business. And I didn't mind if someone hung up on me, I would call them back. Because one of the things that I've learned over the years is that my strength is in understanding people on an emotional level, right? So that is my big strength. So I would call those people back and say, hey, I think we got disconnected. And they'd say, no, I hung up on you. And I say, oh my gosh, well, why why did you do that? Did I say something wrong? <laughs> and they would say, well, I'm just really having a bad day. And I'm like, well, what's going on? And, and then they would just start to unleash and let everything out. And before I got off the phone the second time with them, I'd made a new friend and had an appointment, you know? So I, I, I've never found a problem with cold calling. And I will say that with calling all these the Southerners in North Carolina, um, they were nice as could be, really mm-hmm. nice as could be. Mm-hmm. And so maybe there's something in that, like, hey, we don't cold call, but when you do, you get a really good response because maybe people just don't cold call. <laughs> so, so maybe it's an opportunity. What I can do though is, you know, I'm certainly willing to change and adjust. That's why I came to mm-hmm. Epic so that I could learn how to use a CMA. So I could learn how to automate stuff. So now what I would like is Charles's script so that I can tailor. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I need something to go on. I I have like just, you know, nothing to really to go on. Yes. Well, here's the thing. I wouldn't use it verbatim. I totally get that. Yeah. Yes, I totally get that. And yes, we all need to tweak things to make it our own. Right. Um, and th- so that's not a problem. But I also believe that you need to use your strengths, right? Your strengths. Right. And so while I'm all about personal development and growth, and if you feel drawn to learn something specific, new, that you're like, I really want to learn how to do this, by all means, do it. But if you're forcing it because you think you're supposed to, anytime you think you're supposed to, that is mm-hmm. a big old red flag. I don't want no, you to I, do anything that you think you're supposed to. That's like, no, no I think I could be very good with cold calling just with All a right. little guidance. I, well, I really then there do. we go. There we go. And that is a new, a, a new way to look at it. And I absolutely love that. And yes, I think that's a good way to go. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. Right. So okay. key growth points. Okay. You guys have heard some examples. Now I want you to throw down what you think your key growth points are. You can change these guys. You can, this is a PDF. So, you know, you can change it as you go and just know that, you know, you can print this off as many times as you need to. <laughs> <laughs> you need to redo it or write it in pencil. Um, and then the next few pages, I've taken these five key growth points, okay? And said, write your key growth point title on the line above and then break it down into specific action items, strategies, or processes in these circles below. So kind of like what we were just saying here with Pamelita, right? That if she's saying, well, I want to do age and attraction, Then we would put agent attraction up here on this top line. And then in these circles here, you can write down, well, what ways am I attracting agents? So Pamelita likes in-person events, right? So maybe she puts in-person events that she's hosting, in-person events she's attending, right? Uh, Networking opportunities, like these these things that she's talking about, like the the hard hat tours and things like that. Maybe she does some uh, one-to-one meetings, right? Coffee meetups, lunches, things like that. And then maybe she wants to try cold calling. So she's going to put that down here, right? So here's some, these are how you break it down into specific categories. When we have specific categories, we know more about how we're going to achieve a specific goal. So we're not just saying like, here's a goal, sounds great. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And then in March, you kind of give up on yourself because January, February, and March, you really didn't do anything with it yet. We don't do that here, okay? We set a goal and then we put some, we put specifics underneath it. So we know how we're going to achieve the goal. So this is a space where you start filling that out. Pamelita, thank you so much. That was a great example um, that takes us into how we do those things, right? Does anybody have questions about this aspect so far? You have Um, a lot of circles there, um, Angela. Uh, Is there, I mean, I suppose, I I think I I count, how many do we have there? We have uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I have 
five growth points up here, five mm -hmm. growth points that I want you to focus on. And then under each growth point, I gave you six circles. Okay. Okay. With a few lines on them so that you can write a little bit of a, a sentence or a paragraph or something for yourself. Okay. Um, for each one. So, so here's the in, question. Um, mm -hmm. Oftentimes I find that people, when they start to bullet point their main yes. goals, and then mm -hmm. obviously further refine the goal in more detail, how to get to those goals or how to achieve mm -hmm. those goals. Is there a point where you see that it's maybe overly burdensome, where it's just too much to do, where the list is just too big? Um, I think they it, it depends on the person, okay? So if you try to hyper-focus too much, you can go overboard on that. But if you don't hyper-focus enough, you're not going to have the actions to put into your calendar. The idea is to take you from goal to action to task, and then the task goes into your calendar and you set it to repeat. So whether you set that to repeat on a daily, a weekly, a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, what have you, it needs to be on your calendar or it will not get done. So one of the things that I recommend for agents, and I've done this over and over and over again, I do this for myself and it really helped me because I'll tell you, and I, I know Jay, Jade's just, just getting to know me over the last few months. I, I am meticulously organized and that is, that is not something that comes natural to me. I am naturally an extremely disorganized, hot mess of a person. And I realized that with the dreams and goals that I had, I could not achieve those by being disorganized, by being a mess. I couldn't do it. So I had to choose. Was I going to go after my dreams or was, was I going to stay in this messy mess and I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go after my dreams. So I'm going to learn how to take my creative brain and make it organized, make it structured. And so that's what I did. And one of the things that I realized I had a real struggle with was how I managed my time. That was really, really difficult for me. And I found that I was often overbooking myself. I was missing appointments. I would double book myself. Um, and, and, and then I wasn't, I had no focus or rhyme or reason to the activities in my day so that I wasn't actually moving myself forward. I was just treading water in the same space and not going anywhere. And I found a lot of agents struggled with that too. So I passed on what I did to fix it. And so one of the things that I started doing was what I call time journaling. So this is very, very helpful if you have a hard time managing your time is if any of you have ever kept a food journal for a dietary reasons, um, it's just like that. But what we do is we write down what we're doing when we do it. So the time it takes to do it when we start, when we finish, and then really important here, how we feel when we're doing that task, because what that does is it allows you to see after a week where your time actually goes, how much time it actually takes you to do something. Uh, that was something that I was underestimating constantly. And it also tells you what things you actually want to be doing versus which things you really don't want to be doing and how you feel about those things, right? So when I time journaled for a week, I was able to look at my time journal and realize why I had such a problem managing my time. And then what I did was I went back and I started plugging in things that I wanted to do into my calendar, along with knowing how long it took me to do them. And when I did that, it made it much easier for me to manage my time realistically because I knew what it took to do those things. And so anytime I had a change in my life, so when I first started doing this, um, it was... Uh, long time ago in my, I had two big kids were very little. And then when I married, um, my, my second husband, my, my husband, Joe, uh, we had a blended family. So I had two kids, he had two kids, and then we had to figure out how to do that together. And then I started homeschooling all the kids and was coaching 40 agents and teaching three real estate classes live in person at an office every week. 
and was taking care of the house and taking care of five dogs and managed to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with my husband every day and managed to read books and do yoga and meditate and do all these things. And people were like, how are you doing all of that? And it was literally because I time journaled, got a handle of my time and plugged every single thing into my calendar, including time with each kid. So this way I was able to actually do every single thing I wanted to do. And my days were packed every single day, but I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish, including time for me. So it didn't feel overwhelming. It didn't feel stressful. It felt good. So I would really recommend time journaling to absolutely everyone. And so Jay, that's a long answer to your question, but um, it, it, it is about breaking things down into a task that you can put on the calendar. Cause if it's not there, it's not gonna happen. You know okay. me in calendars. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm right there with you. Okay. So once we've broken things down into specific tasks, then what I want you to do is to understand what, what of those tasks on all those pages and all those bubbles, which one of those are daily activities. Okay. So, you know, Jay is a hashtag every day is Monday, right? What mm -hmm. are those things that are, are every day is Monday items, right? Which are the dailies? So age and attraction that you might want that to be a daily item, right? Taking care of yourself, self-care is going to be a daily item. I meditate every single day because if I don't, I, I, I'm like, I start like vibrating from the inside out. It's like I sh I'm shaking because I can't handle all, all the stuff that's coming at me all day. But if I meditate and ground myself in the morning, I don't feel like that. I feel like I've got a handle on my day all day long. You know, if you talk to Charles, he's in the gym every morning at 8 a.m., like religiously, right? So, and 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 you just know that about him, right? So daily activities, daily activities are really, really important to understand what things are gonna go on your calendar because then you plug them into a spot on your calendar and they are there. Every day, you set it to repeat, makes it really simple on Google Calendar or your iCalendar. If you're on Apple or PC, you just set it and it's on repeat. And then what happens then is that when you go to book an appointment or somebody wants to book an appointment with you, you know that there are certain things that you are not moving. You are not going to move off your calendar. I know Jay, is a, it goes out and takes a run, right? What time of the day do you run every morning, Jay? 5 a.m. There you go. See the answer? Very quick. <laughs> because he knows it's there. It's going to happen every single day, right? So those are the things. You put them daily. Daily. What needs to happen daily? And then the next thing I want you to do is I want you to write down what happens every week. So these are things that are maybe once a week, twice a week. You can set these things on your calendar too and set them to repeat. What happens weekly? So some of the things that might happen weekly, when we had five kids at home, because we had a baby after we had four kids together, um, I had to redo my time journaling then too, because I had to figure in being pregnant. Then I had to figure in breastfeeding and taking care of a newborn and all that. Still managed to do everything, by the way. Okay. Weekly activities for me, one of them was uh, food prepping. And I made all our food for the entire week in one day in four hours because it was easier for me to do that. And it saved me time. It made me much more efficient than if I tried to make dinner for everybody every single day. I didn't have time for that. Not with my schedule. So I did it once a week, took me four hours. And the I had two fridges full of food in that time period. So that was a weekly activity that I did not miss because it was me taking care of my family. Now, there may be things for your work that you want to do on a weekly basis, like check in with your goals. How are you doing? You know, what's going on with you? How is it? Check your agent reports, right? Your agent report. How many people are in your downline? What's your, your real estate business look like? How, are, how far are you into your cap? Are you on track for where you want to be for the year? Now, that may be something you want to look at weekly. And then your monthly activities, same thing. You're looking back at your circles, what things need to happen once a month. This might be planning, 
It might be um, something where you want to, um, another weekly item, going back up to weekly, might be social media content. If you're focused on social media, if that's one of your focuses, or like I said, short, short form video content, I got a thumbs up on that. Yeah. <laughs> short form video content might be a weekly activity that goes on the calendar, right? Or you may say, you know what? I want to once a month, I want to take like two days and really map it all out, right? So um, some of the things that I know, like Dawn runs one of her programs once a month, right? So these are things you can put in on a monthly basis, but it's the same thing. It's just how am I breaking these activities and tasks down and how am I putting them on my, my calendar and how often are they repeating? So that this way, you know, your calendar is set and all you have to do is follow it. And that makes it really, really easy. All right. Now digging into this. So once you get past that section, that's just organization of your goals, right? I want you to take some time to write down a paragraph that's going to help you remember why this matters to you, okay? Why does all this stuff that you have on your list matter to you? Now, for me, a lot of the, the things that I find that are important, and, and I'll read you this to you. This is right out of my, my book that I put in here, is I said, I'm reaching my next level self, and this is where that self is headed. I will take advantage of this opportunity to create financial independence and freedom and then use my time to help others achieve their goals and life purpose. That's why all of my goals that I have set, that's why it's important to me. That's why it matters. So I want you to think in and just write a paragraph to yourself of why this matters to you. I'm not talking about a big why. I'm just saying like, all these goals and tasks and on all of this, like if you're having a day when you're like, oh, I don't feel like it today, what is going to remind you why it's important? That's what you want to write down there. Okay. Does anybody have something like that that they, they want to share? It may be hard to come up with in the moment like that, but if you have one, I would love to hear it. Feel free to put it into the chat. Jasmine said, I love this. Oh, I'm so glad. That's good. I'm glad you love it. <laughs> All right. Um, next space, remembering 2023. So I want you to use this spot here on this page to really connect with what 2023 gave you. Okay. For a lot of people that I've talked to, 2023 was a really tough year was a really tough year because it was a year of transformation for a lot of people. And I, I don't know what's going on collectively with that, but there is something about this last year that has been really transformational for people where they've, they've been hit with a lot of change and a lot of things that are new. And, you know, transformation isn't easy. It can be painful. It can be hard to let go of who we've been and what we've done, or maybe, dreams that we had that we've let go of in, in favor of a new dream, you know, uh, letting go of parts of ourselves for a new version that we want to claim. And so I want you to look back at 2023 and I want you to look at things, especially the things that felt painful. And I want you to look back at those things and say, what was the gift in this? What was this e event, this experience? What did it give me? How did it hold me back? How did it move me forward? You know, what changed for you in your life and your work? How did you change over the course of this year? Because I can tell you that me this time last year and me right now are two very different people. Because 20, oh, I got the balloons again for that one. <laughs> 2023 was a transformative year for me too. And a lot of things changed. And there were a lot of things that were painful for me to let go of. But all of it was a gift, all of it. And there were so many things that I have taken away from this year that have made me into who I am now, that have taken me to where I am now, that I will forever be grateful for. And one of those is, is coming here to Epic Realty. So I want you to think about what were the gifts in 2023. And then I want you to release outdated beliefs. So think about a belief that held you back. And then I want you to write 
down what those are, things that you want to let go of, things that you're like, nope, I'm done with this now. And then I want you to write down a new statement, placing you into your next level self. Who are you ready to become? Write down your new belief around that. And then I want you to take the time to write down what 2024 is about for you. So if you were going to write down like a, a theme for what your year is, what is it about? What do you want this next year to, to be about? Who do you want to be at the end of 2024? How is that person different from who you are now? And then I want you to give yourself some themes here. So I want you to think of a word or a phrase that you can place in front of you all year long that will help you remember what this year is about for you. So if you guys talk to Dawn, you might see a, a little bee on stuff, some of her things, you know, like a little bumblebee. Her word for 2023 was bee. And she just thought of all these things that she wanted to be. And she was like, you know what? There's so many things I want to be this year. She just made her word be. That was her word, right? I thought it How was cool uh, busy bee. <laughs> busy me, yes. So I want you to think about what word or phrase that you can use that's going to tell you what your, your, your year is about. This year for me is about trust and allow. So I wrote those two words down, trust and allow. That's my focus for 2024, because this is a whole new world for me. Trust and allow is, is, is me saying, I'm letting go of, of all this stuff that I have been and that I have done. And I'm saying, I am becoming something completely new this year. And I am trusting and allowing all of that to unfold. And I think that's a beautiful thing, right? So that's my word. But if 2024 was a song, what would that song be? Okay, I love doing this because what happens is you'll find that you hear that song and it just reminds you of what you're there to do this year. It just makes you jump up and down. So I want you to all have a theme song for your year that when you hear it, you're like, yes, this is it. This is my year. This is what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> all right. So that's it. I know we only have a few minutes left. Jay, I hope I left you enough time. No, 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 that's no. You're it. good. You're good. Great I'm stop. going to. I, thank you. I'm going to pop this uh, PDF back into the chat because I know we've had some people join after. Yeah. Um, so if you. Um, I'm going to put that in here for you guys. So you guys can print this out, go through it as many times as you want. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'm happy to walk you through this and help you with it. Um, you want you to know, drop your uh, contact info in the chat box too, Angela? Yep. Happy to. I'm going to stop the recording here.